Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of Walnut Creek's virtual community workshop for the Sustainability Action Plan. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. We are going to get started in a couple of minutes while we wait for other folks to come online. There are a couple of things that we wanted to point out that you can do um, to get settled in for the meeting. So we are going to ask everyone to stay on mute um, during the presentation. You'll um, be very welcome to come off mute when we go into small breakout group discussions later in the meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted online um, on the city's project website later, especially for folks who weren't able to join us tonight. Um, we also have live transcription available. So if you are not seeing that at the bottom of your screen, you can send a note to us, Zoom questions, and we'll be happy to um, help you figure out how to enable that transcription. And while we're waiting for a couple more folks to come online, a couple of things you can do is um, if you wanna check your name, uh, make sure it's your name. I know a lot of us are sharing computers in our households these days. So uh, that's something that you can do. Rename yourself if needed, make sure you're on mute and uh, orient yourself to the chat box, which is where we welcome you to send your questions to us as we go um, through the workshop this evening. So, and uh, we will be able to go over a few Zoom tips a bit later this evening. Okay. So just give us a couple moments here. I think we're gonna get started very quickly. And during this part of the meeting, you, um, are welcome to keep your video on or turn it off if you'd like to. When we go into the small breakout rooms, we will encourage you to, to unmute and turn on your video so we can enjoy the interaction and discussion with each other. Okay, well, it does look like we have a, a good uh, turnout so far. So I'd like to go ahead and get us started uh, so we can um, get to the fun part. So first I'd like to welcome uh, Mayor Kevin Wilk to share some remarks with us. Thank you. And thanks everyone for being here. Just wanted to welcome you. This is such an important workshop. Uh, climate change is one of the foundations of why I ran for city council in the first place and being able to combat it and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And so the work that you're doing here tonight and, uh, and really for the rest of not just the year, but for the rest of all of our years, this is something that's going to be important and, uh, and front and center. So again, appreciate everybody for being here. I did wanna let you know that uh, there are video monthly mayor updates from me. And so those go out through our normal social media channels. In fact, I did mention this workshop on the March update and tomorrow I'm filming the April update. And I'll mention that we've had this workshop as well. So keep an eye out for those monthly. We talk about the different things that are happening in the city. And of course, some of the reopenings as well. Uh, some of you may know that two weeks ago, the city council voted on our top five priorities for the next two years and uh, climate action is one of them, but I did wanna mention what all of the five were for those that may not be familiar with it. So these are really the most important, highest priority things for the city to advance and ones that we really need that, uh, that power and oomph from the city to be able to make sure that we're able to achieve them. The first is, and, I, and actually I should mention that these are all equal in weight. I'll give them to you alphabetically, but here are the top five diversity, equity, and inclusion, economic development and COVID recovery, environmental sustainability and climate action, infrastructure and facilities, and the fifth is social wellness and public safety. And to give a little bit of more description on the environmental sustainability and climate action, it's to remain a leader in reducing greenhouse gas emissions and achieving other sustainability goals by completing the update of the city's sustainable action plan, establishing a funding program and adopting a climate action emergency resolution 
and implementing the plan as well as other efforts in program areas such as alternative transportation, open space protection, and disaster resiliency. So it's absolutely a critical priority. Uh, again, thank all of you for being here. And I look forward to seeing the staff report on this and to hearing how these discussions proceed and grow in the months ahead. Have a great evening. Great, thank you, Mayor Wilk. And uh, so uh, welcome everyone. I'm, I'm Tammy Seal with PlaceWorks, the consultant team to the city for the Sustainability Action Plan. And I'm gonna be your facilitator this evening. So first I'd like to go over the agenda then we'll have a short poll for you. Uh, and then we'll jump right into the presentation, which will be followed by time for everyone to spend a little bit of time together in small groups. So tonight um, we will have our welcome and introductions, which we're going through right now. Then we have a presentation that will provide you with an update of the work that we've been doing on the sustainability action plan for the past year as well as an update on the progress of the city's existing climate action plan. And then we will uh, jump into a presentation of what it means now that we're ready to start drafting strategies to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, adapt to changing climate conditions, and, and, and move forward on environmental sustainability initiatives. After the presentation, we'll have time for a few questions and then we will spend 45 minutes in breakout rooms. Um, we have some preliminary draft strategy ideas um, that we will be sharing with you. So you'll have a facilitator in each group and an opportunity to go through these um, strategies. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. After the 45 minutes in the small group discussions, we'll come back together to, to share, to report out uh, our conversations and wrap up. And it is our goal to wrap up uh, at 7.30. Um, so with that, I uh, wanna introduce a few other members of our project team. So uh, in, a, in addition to um, Mayor Wilk and the city council, you know, guiding this effort. This is being led out of the community development department. Uh, community development director, Mark Wardlaw is here tonight and our project manager and sustainability coordinator, Sarah Batista, Kara Batista Rao is also with us. And you'll hear from Kara in just a moment. From PlaceWorks, um, we have Eli Crispy who will be leading um, part of the presentation and uh, Jacqueline Prosman, Tarina Wilson, and, and Juana with Cadmus, our teaming partner, who will be small group facilitators. So you'll get to know our team a little bit more tonight. So before we jump into the presentation, we have a few questions for you. And so this is a, a poll that you can take um, by copying and pasting the link. Um, and we'll put that into the chat so that you can copy and paste that into your web browser. Go ahead and open a second web browser. If you have a smartphone with you, you should be able to scan the QR code right here on the screen and it'll pop into the Mintimeter poll. Um, or you can go to Minty, M-E-N-T-I dot com and enter the code 33529284. So there are a few different ways to get to this poll. And uh, it looks like at least one of you has found your way there. <laughs> so we have four questions for you. Um, and let's let the project team, Torino, can you drop that code into the chat for us? I sure can, one moment. Okay, so our first question is asking if you have participated in workshops, surveys, or other activities that the city has hosted over the past year as part of the preparation of the sustainability action plan. So we had our first virtual community workshop last summer. We've had um, a couple presentations and discussions with the city council, presentation with the planning commission, the transportation commission, an online survey, uh, project website, and um, some stakeholder conversations. So we're curious to know if um, any of you have been part of that process to date. Looks like 
good answers coming in on that. And we will share the results here. We're just right now showing you the code so that um, you can still find your way there. Uh, and you can you should be able to navigate through the questions at your own pace. So the second question asked if you like an overview of how to use Zoom for this workshop. Uh, the third question is helpful to us. Um, we're asking, you know, how you've heard about it. We, we always try a few different techniques to get the word out about these workshops. And so it's helpful for us to know uh, which techniques are reaching folks. You're here. <laughs> so we want to know how you got here. And then the fourth question is an open answer question. And we're, I'm going to leave this uh, poll open during the workshop. So you are welcome to come back to this if you'd like to and uh, provide a response to the question, what is the most important climate action for the city of Walnut Creek? We know there are many things the city can do, but if, there's, if you have a number one, this would be a great time to share that. And uh, at the end of the workshop, I will uh, share these results as well, because I'm sure many of you will wanna have a little time to send these responses. So Trina, if you're able to share the results, I think we can go ahead and do that. Yes, I can. <clears throat> Sharing now, let me refresh. Here we go. So we had 18 answers for the first question on whether or not you've participated in past project outreach. It looks like quite a few people have seen the project website and we do have some people who also came to our past workshops. There's that second question. We had 20 people who answered this one. I think we're very far into the time of Zoom. So most of you are pretty familiar with Zoom. Um, let's see, 21 people answered on how they heard about the workshop, most of them through Eventbrite or the Eco e-newsletter. So we're happy that the word's getting out in these ways. And do we have, here we go. Tammy, do you want me to share these ones now or you mentioned you'd share them at the end? I will go over those. Um... We'll definitely share these when we do small group report outs, but it's fine. You know, it's great to see that. I think many of you were pretty quick with that answer. So there's certainly, um, you're coming with your ideas and, and priorities, which I was, I was hopeful that you all would do. So it's great to see some responses here and to see that um, there's a range of, of priorities coming from all of you. So looking forward to getting to talk with you all about those. So I recognize that not everyone um, has been able to access this. So uh, I, we did put the website address into the chat. This poll will remain open throughout the workshop if you'd like to go ahead and take it at your own pace. Um, but one question we asked uh, does guide us through the next part of the agenda. So I will take a couple minutes here to go over uh, some Zoom, Zoom features that will be helpful to you as we go through the meeting. So uh, if you, uh, when we're gonna, and we have snapshots, uh, screenshots of what a computer, it might look like on your computer. Some of you are gonna be on tablets. Some of you are gonna be on smartphones. So your view may vary from what we show on the screen. But generally the process is um, the same that the toolbar for Zoom is at the bottom of your screen. So you should see like in the lower left, corner of your Zoom screen, a, a microphone, which is where you mute and unmute yourself. It should have a red line through it for most of you right now. Uh, next to that is a camera, a video camera button. Um, and that's where you can turn your, your video on and off. You also have the option if you click on the right button next to that to show a virtual background. Uh, other important buttons to know about at the bottom of your screen are the chat button. So there's a little comment bubble, and that is uh, where you click on that and you'll be able to send questions to me. I'm project questions, ask me, Tammy. If you have questions about Zoom as you go through the meeting, you can send those to Tarina. She's labeled as Zoom questions, ask me. Uh, you will be able to send questions to the hosts um, and we will... Um, 
answer questions when we get to that part of, of the meeting after the presentation. Uh, this also offers the option to do live transcript, which isn't a button that's actually shown in our snapshot right now, but you should see it's labeled as live transcript with a little CC above it. And if you click on the up arrow next to it, you have the option to hide subtitles or to show subtitles. And it's totally fine to hide them. If you hide them, you're only hiding your view. You're not affecting anybody else. And if you um, have any, uh, any, at any point during the workshop, if you wanna share a reaction, that button is enabled. So you can send thumbs up if you hear something that you really support as we go through the evening. And so Tarina's clicked through how the views might vary. Your toolbar in a tablet is gonna be at the top of your screen. Um, and in some cases you may need to swipe right to be able to see other features or to see participants in the meeting. For your view in the top right corner for most of you on a computer, there's a small button next to the timer that says view. And when you click on that, you have the option to do like a gallery view, which is to see everybody or um, speaker view, which will highlight the speaker when they're speaking. Um, through most of this workshop, we're gonna have our, um, we'll be doing screen share of the PowerPoint. So that's what's gonna fill up most of your screen. Okay, I think, and so you should be able to start and stop your video at any time. You can rename yourself. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns as you know about using any of these features, as we've mentioned, please do send a note to Tarina at Zoom questions, ask me through the chat. All right, well, I think that we are now ready to jump into our presentation and I'd like to invite Kara to get us started. Thank you, Tammy, and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming tonight to the workshop. I'm going to give a little bit of background on our um, 2012 climate action plan that the city council adopted. Um, so we've been working to implement that plan since 2012. It had two big goals. One was to reduce our emissions across the entire community 15% below 2005 levels by the year 2020. We did uh, look at our progress in the year 2017 and found that we had already reduced emissions 27%. So we're on track to exceed that goal, which is great news. Um, we also set a goal to reduce emissions from our city operations and facilities like at City Hall, 39% below 2005 levels by 2020. We're largely on track to meet those goals. Next, please. Um, so our climate action plan from 2012 had 21 different strategies and 157 specific action items to implement in it. And it covered everything from uh, saving water to renewable energy. The city was able to implement 80% of all of these actions. And on your screen here, you can see a few of these high level strategies and some of the accomplishments. So everything from saving um, electricity at our city facilities to the miles of bike improvements, the number of residents and businesses who are getting cleaner electricity through MCE, and um, how many acres we've converted to drought tolerant landscaping. So that's all accomplishments from our climate action plan through the year 2020. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Um, so in February of 2019, the City Council, as our mayor mentioned, set their council priorities for the next two years, and they wanted us to expand and update our 2012 Climate Action Plan for the next decade. So we're calling this the Sustainability Action Plan. It has three main areas of focus, and the first is to continue to address climate change by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. In addition, City Council directed us to expand what we're looking at and consider two more topics. So we are looking at climate adaptation, which is the idea of being um, prepared for and better able to respond to hazards caused by climate change like wildfires or droughts. And we've also added sustainability to cover other environmental topics that are um, less related to climate change. So these could be topics like waste uh, waste reduction, water conservation, or air quality. And by addressing some of these sustainability issues, we also see other benefits like better public health. 
So we are using the sustainability action plan to address all three areas. And we also want to integrate and align this plan with um, other plans that the city has already adopted, like our general plan and the rethinking mobility transportation plan. Next, please. Uh, so some of you have participated in phase one of this process. Uh, we did a lot of community outreach in phase one and thank you for your participation. Um, we also did a lot of technical analysis and we're building on all of that as we start the next phase tonight um, on phase two. So just to save time, I'm not gonna go over all of the results from phase one, but if you're interested in learning more, you can go to the project website that you see on your screen here walnut-creek.org slash SAP and all of the materials, all of the findings, results, and recordings of the last public workshop are up online on the website there. Next. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, we are starting phase two of the project. We just wrapped up phase one, which was focused on initiating the project, creating a vision, and doing some early technical analysis. Phase two is focused on policy and strategy development. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. And then phase three of the plan is really about drafting the actual document of the sustainability action plan. We'll be doing environmental review and then going to city council to adopt a final plan. Um, throughout each of the three phases, there are opportunities for public outreach and for your engagement and input. And I just want to highlight some of the upcoming opportunities in phase two. So we're all here tonight for the public workshop. Um, there are upcoming commission meetings. We are planning an online survey. Um, and we will be returning to city council near the end of phase two, likely in June or July. So um, you're invited to give your input at any of these upcoming opportunities. And the best way to be notified is to sign up for our email list through the project website. Uh, next slide. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Eli for the next bit of the presentation. All right. Thank you, Kara. Uh, I will now walk through some of the approach to developing the strategy that will be in the sustainability action plan. So Walnut Creek uh, city staff members, uh, members of the community, some of you who are here tonight, uh, and the city council have all weighed in and helped draft a vision and a set of objectives uh, that's going to guide the work on the sustainability action plan. So the vision and the objective statement cover what we are hoping the overall goal of the sustainability action plan is going to be, as well as some of the higher level issues and the objectives that we want to make sure the plan addresses. Jobs and housing, uh, coordination with internal and external partners, uh, leading by example, uh, and so on. So California has adopted a set of reduction targets and goals for statewide greenhouse gas emissions. By 2030, a state law has established a target for statewide greenhouse gas emissions to be about 40% below 1990 levels. Uh, and by 2045, a state law is requiring that all electricity sold in the state will, to be carbon free, so not producing any greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, the state has also set goals that are contained in executive order, so they are not yet set into law, but they are providing directions and goals as to where the state would like to head. This is a goal of being net carbon neutral by 2045, uh, and to reduce total greenhouse gas emissions 80% below 1990 levels by 2050. Uh, net carbon neutral, by the way, that means that the state would still be producing some level of greenhouse gas emissions, but all of those emissions would be uh, offset or balanced out uh, through various mechanisms. Walnut Creek does have the option to adopt the state targets as the city's own, uh, or the city can create different targets that are unique to the community uh, as long as they remain broadly consistent with the direction that the state has laid out. Uh, so we will, we will be evaluating different greenhouse gas reduction pathways as part of, of the sustainability action plan. We wanna see what it will take uh, to achieve different levels of greenhouse gas reduction. Now here you can see Walnut Creek's historic and future emissions, uh, that's the yellow line, uh, and then how they compare to the state adopted targets, that's a white line. Uh, as Kara mentioned, uh, in 2020, Walnut Creek's 
emissions were projected to be well below the state targets. Uh, I should emphasize that as a projection of 2020 emissions. It's not an actual greenhouse gas inventory, so that does not reflect the impacts from the pandemic. Uh, by 2030, we are projecting that even without the Sustainability Action Plan, there's enough already in place that Walnut Creek's emissions are expected to be 43% below 2005 levels. Uh, and that's only, so that means that only a little bit more action will be needed to achieve the state target, which translates to 49% below 2005 levels. Uh, but then by 2050, the city's emissions are projected to be a decent bit above the state target uh, before the sustainability action plan is considered. So one major goal of that of the sustainability plan action plan is going to be figuring out how do we reduce long-term greenhouse gas emissions uh, to get to the city's uh, not only short-term but also longer-term greenhouse gas targets. The plan is going to lay out strategies to meet these reduction targets and to help the community adapt to climate change related hazards and promote overall sustainability in Walnut Creek. So the strategies are statements of what the city will do under the sustainability action plan. We really wanna make sure that these strategies meet the community needs and values and that they need to be specifically tailored to conditions in Walnut Creek. So critically, the strategies should be measurable. It should be trackable. It should be things that the city is able to uh, to understand and to report on progress in a regular basis to city council and to community members. Uh, strategies should fit into the work plans of city departments or key community partners, uh, making it clear that someone is responsible for getting it done. And that will also help the, the plan to better leverage the public and private programs and partnerships that are out there. Uh, the strategies will be based on feedback from members of the public, from all of you here tonight, and those who have participated in other events, uh, as well as inputs from city staff and decision makers, uh, current best practices, existing successful efforts in Walnut Creek uh, and in the region more broadly, uh, and also emerging opportunities that the city can take advantage of. So the city council has approved several criteria that we are going to be using to help evaluate potential strategies. This includes the level of greenhouse gas reduction that the strategy could achieve, some of the costs, uh, as well as the cost savings that would be associated with that strategy. So not only any upfront costs, but also longer term costs or longer term savings over the lifetime of the strategy, as well as some other factors that would be associated with putting it into effect. So these are the criteria that we will be looking at to determine which potential strategies are written up and included in the adopted sustainability action plan. In addition to the criteria, the City Council has also approved what we're calling factors. These are, if you will, sort of additional influences or considerations to keep in mind when we develop strategies. So these are some of the key topics that City Council members would like the Sustainability Action Plan to support and to try and address uh, within the policy framework uh, of the strategies. So we won't be formally scoring or evaluating these uh, for how potential strategies might fit within these factors, but they are intended to help inform the strategy development process. So one of those uh, earlier criteria is going to be what are called co-benefits. So I wanna take a moment to explain what those are. So the primary intent of the strategies in the Sustainability Action Plan is going to be to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, to support community resilience, uh, or to improve community sustainability or ideally we'll do all three. But in addition to those, there are other community values or priorities that we want these strategies to be able to support. And these other priorities that are what we're calling co-benefits. Uh, this list is still being figured out, but it may include things such as improving public health, helping community members to save money on utility bills, uh, enhancing equity, and, and likely a few others. Uh, looking at the greenhouse gas reduction strategies, there are two ways that a strategy may decrease greenhouse gas emissions. So firstly, a strategy can decrease the amount of an activity that produces emissions. Secondly, a strategy may decrease the level of emissions per amount of activity. So for example, if we're trying to reduce emissions from transportation, 
a strategy could try to decrease the amount of miles that people drive, say by increasing access to public transit or making it easier to bike. That would be the first option. And then the second option, uh, decreasing the carbon intensity, that could be doing something such as increasing the amount of fuel efficient vehicles on the road or electric vehicles that are in the community. Uh, so the city in some cases might only be able to affect one of these two areas. Uh, in other cases, the city might be able to affect both. Uh, so we will kind of look to see whatever is really within the city's uh, ability to influence and to encourage greenhouse gas reductions. Uh, and on the right, you see that the strategy, the strategy will be organized generally into these six categories. And many of these we'll go over in the breakout rooms later on. Uh, to go over these six strategies, uh, beginning with transportation, this is the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in Walnut Creek. This is from cars and trucks on the road predominantly. Uh, emissions from transportation have come down 15% since 2005 uh, as of 2017, even though people haven't really changed how much they're driving. Uh, and BART, uh, BART miles were up by 30%, although emissions from BART are a fraction of the emissions uh, that are generated by cars and trucks. Uh, over this time, Walnut Creek community members have also increased the amount of electric vehicles in the city. Uh, as of 2018, there were close to 1,700 EVs uh, registered in Walnut Creek, and there were almost 50 publicly accessible electric vehicle chargers, uh, not including proprietary ones like the Tesla chargers or uh, electric chargers that are located in public spaces. If we look at waste and materials, uh, the amount of solid waste that was generated by community members decreased 12% from 2005 to 2017. And that's despite Walnut Creek's population growing. So people are not only throwing out less overall, but there's quite a bit, there's a uh, general reduction in Walnut Creek and the amount of waste that's being produced that is sort of larger than the increase in waste that you might expect from a growing population. Along with a significant reduction in what's called alternative daily cover, which is the type of material that's used in landfill operations, Walnut Creek's overall emissions from waste are down 27%, or were down 27% uh, as of 2017. And the Sustainability Action Plan will be looking at opportunities to bring this down even more. Uh, if we look at water, this is a small source of greenhouse gas emissions, but it is an important resource for the sake of community resilience and overall sustainability. Water use did decline 39% between 2005 and 2015, uh, likely as a result of the drought. Uh, and since then, water use has increased somewhat. Uh, it is still below where it was in 2005, and that's despite, again, the Walnut Creek's population growth. Uh, one area that we do expect to see a lot of attention in the Sustainability Action Plan, uh, and some of you brought it up earlier in the Menti poll, is natural gas use in buildings. So in homes, a natural gas use was 9% below 2005 levels in 2017. Uh, in in non-residential buildings, it increased 18% over that period. Natural gas alone accounts for over 20% of Walnut Creek's greenhouse gas emissions. And unlike electricity, there isn't an available option currently for Walnut Creek community members to get cleaner sources of natural gas. Those really aren't out there. So in addition to the greenhouse gas emissions, natural gas is also a public health and a climate resilience issue. So burning natural gas produces various harmful pollutants, uh, carbon monoxide, uh, formaldehyde, and others. And without proper ventilation, the use of natural gas appliances, and especially cooking appliances, can cause or worsen uh, a wide range of public health problems, uh, nose and throat irritation, headaches, fatigue, uh, nausea, and uh, young children, uh, senior citizens, and persons with asthma are particularly at risk of these. And many of these effects can be exacerbated by climate-related hazards such as extreme heat, uh, which are discussed in the vulnerability assessment. On the opposite side, emissions from electricity have declined 68%, 68% as of 2017 compared to 2005 levels. At, but total electricity use was only down 5%. So what's happening here is that the sources of electricity in Walnut Creek have gotten a lot cleaner. And that is especially due to the switch to MCE in 2017. 
we expect electricity to con continue to get cleaner uh, as time goes on. So for example, in 2017, NCE got about 87% of its electricity from renewable or other carbon-free sources. Uh, and NCE's plan is that by 2022, that number will be at least 95%. So there are more opportunities for reduction here. Uh, and then climate health and resilience is another critical part of the sustainability action plan. And that's part of the technical work for this plan. We prepared what's called the climate vulnerability assessment. This identifies how climate change will affect Walnut Creek. Some of the, there's all sorts of uh, detailed write-ups about this, but one such impact would be extreme heat days. Uh, these are days where the high temperature exceeds 98 degrees. Uh, those are expected to rise from a historic norm of about four days per year, up to 20 such days by 2050, and as many as 34 days, you know, more than a month's worth uh, by 2100. Uh, the city is also looking at a decline in local rainfall and stream flow, as well as a decline in precipitation in the watersheds in the Sierra Nevada, which is where a, a lot of Walnut Creek's water comes from. So California law requires that cities plan for climate change related hazards and that they identify adaptation strategies uh, and the ones in the sustainability action plan will let Walnut Creek comply uh, with the state law. So that, uh, that kind of wraps up the technical overview and some of the background of the sustainability action plan. I know that was a, a lot to throw at you all at once. Uh, if there is any questions that anyone has uh, through the chat, we'd be happy to take those. Thank you, Eli and Kara. And uh, we have received one question through the chat. So if you have a question for us, please do send it our way through the chat. Uh, I, as Eli noted, we, he, we did cover a lot <laughs> just now. So um, just a reminder that a recording of this workshop and the presentation will be available on the project web website in the, in the next few days. Um, the, a PDF uh, of, of, the, of this presentation will also be available for you to review at your own pace as well. So you will be able to take a little more time with this information if you'd like to do so. Eli, um, we have a question about the target. So you may want to drop back to the slide where we list the state's targets. Uh, so we have a question asking, um, noting um, or clarifying that the, the state's targets, there's a, a concern that we were not covering earlier deadlines, noting there's a 2035 and a, or 2030 and 2035 target. So um, I believe, Eli, this slide presents the adopted targets and then the state's goals, which are presented in executive orders by our current and previous governors, right? Right. So this is presenting uh, the 2030 target of 40% below 1990 levels, which is uh, codified into law. Uh, and then kind of as a, not for overall greenhouse gas emissions, but specific, specifically for electricity, uh, there is a 2045 goal of being of the electricity being carbon free. Those are kind of the, the two main targets that are coming up that are adopted into law. And then there are others that have been laid out in executive orders, like the carbon neutral goal by 2045, or the goal of 80% below 1990 levels, uh, because those are only in executive orders and uh, do not yet have the force of law. Uh, they're addressed a little differently, but they are indicative of the direction that the state is intending to go in. Yeah. And so, yeah, so the city is absolutely um, monitoring and um, following the state's targets. And uh, if new ones come on while we're working on the plan, we'll continue to follow those. Uh, I think that's fair to say. Okay. Uh, doesn't we haven't received any other questions? Um, so I'm going to go and talk forward and talk a little bit. Um, I'll give you some an overview of what to expect in the breakout rooms. Uh, if you have a question, go ahead and send it in the chat. If we get any before we go into the breakout rooms, we'd be happy to go over those. So momentarily, uh, I'll be launching you into small group. Uh, breakout rooms. Hopefully um, you have done this before. If not, just sit tight. The computer does the work for you and you'll go from this space where we're, you know, 40 of us are together to a, a Zoom room where you'll be in a group of about five uh, to eight people. 
And during this time, we're going to share with you some draft uh, strategies that are up for consideration for inclusion in the plan. Please um, really focus on that word draft. They're preliminary, they're draft, they're ideas. Uh, we're just getting started. And so these have come from um, what we heard from, from many of you probably and others who participated in our first workshop who provided comments through the online survey, uh, discussions we've had with the city council, the planning commission, transportation commission and stakeholders. Um, so this is not an exhaustive list. It's a just getting started. We tried to cover a number of topics. Um, as Eli mentioned earlier, we are looking at six categories or goal topics for the organization of the sustainability action plan. Um, due to the time limits tonight, we've consolidated down to four. So you'll go through the discussion topics for buildings, electricity supply, water and wastewater. The second set will be transportation and land use. The third will be uh, about waste and materials. And then the fourth is a, a more general topic of community health and resilience. And so for each of these, we've got a handful of goals and example strategies your facilitator will go over with you. And we will ask you to just give us some feedback to share your, your very, we know these are gonna be your very first impressions of them. So if you have some immediate uh, responses, reactions, considerations, concerns, uh, important notes you want us to know about, barriers, we want to hear it all. Uh, so here's an example of what they will look like, um, what you'll see. So this is just four of the handful that we're going to have tonight, and they will vary in level of detail. Um, you know, a strategy uh, can uh, in most cases, strategies in the sustainability action plan are going to be accompanied by a set of specific actions that are going to have timeframes and a number of other details. We don't have all of that tonight. So, so the strategy wording here will um, change over time as we work through the strategy development process. Uh, so some of these are going to have some details in them. Others might be more general. Um, so if you want some more specificity or something quite direct, that's great input. We want to hear from you tonight. So that is a, a preview of what to expect as we go into the small group discussions. And uh, we have a couple questions before I launch the breakout rooms. So let's see. Um, Eli, there's a question here related to the adaptation and resiliency component of the sustainability action plan. Uh, there's a, a request to be a little bit more specific about what we'll be focusing on, which I think we'll get a high, highlight of that when we get into small breakout groups. But those strategies that the um, participant wants to know, could those include fire prevention, cooling centers? Is that what we have in mind? Yes, those could certainly be part of it. You know, we've looked at several different hazards that are associated with climate change, uh, flooding, landslides, extreme heat, wildfires, air quality, uh, and, and a few others. And any, we're going to be looking at anything that might uh, reduce the damage from these hazards in the community or, and or improve the ability of the community to sort of resist and recover from those effects. So some of those examples that you cited would uh, fit, I think, very well within the, the plan that we have in mind. Great, thank you. And uh, there's a question for us that asks if the draft strategies have been responsive to the greenhouse gas emissions inventory focusing on uh, the greatest sources of emissions. Yes, uh, the greenhouse gas reduction strategies are, you know, ideally we are going to try and reduce all sources of emissions, but certainly transportation and natural gas use are some of the largest in Walnut Creek. So uh, it would not be surprising to see greater emphasis on those just because that's where we get the most bang for the buck in a lot of cases. Yeah, great. So as you're looking at those, just keep in mind the factors that we're gonna be going through as Eli talked about, lots of considerations, criteria. So there's definitely a lot of work ahead of us. Okay, with that, I'm gonna launch you into your groups where you will, um, we've set aside 40 minutes for you all to be in these groups. Uh, 
So I will get us started. If at any, any time while you're in there, you have any troubles, you will have the option to leave the meeting or leave the breakout room. If you leave the breakout room, you'll come back to the main room with me and I can reassign you if you'd like to go into a different group or answer any questions that you might have. If you end up leaving the meeting unintentionally, click that <laughs> Zoom link that got you here in the first place and I'll get you right back into a room. So I will see you all in a little while. Have fun. Howdy. Hey, everybody. Welcome back uh, to the main group. I hope you all enjoyed your small group discussions. Uh, good. You all made it back. So um, good to see you all here. And uh, we're going to take the last uh, few minutes here. We have about five to eight minutes to hear from each of your small group facilitators with some highlights of your conversation. I'll also uh, share back the answers to that last question we had on the Mentimeter poll, and we'll do a wrap up. So let's get started. Eli, would you like to report back for group one? Sure, thank you. Uh, we had some really good discussion around the appropriate role of education uh, compared to man uh, mandates and requirements, uh, sort of how those two should be balanced or how they should be worked together and you know, where uh, efforts should go. Uh, there was also quite a bit of support for considering uh, new development around all electric requirements for new development, also looking at more uh, infill, but done in a way that protects open space uh, and trail access. Uh, we we're also thinking a lot about uh, requirements for water gardens uh, and green infrastructure that should incorporate biodiversity uh, in addition to the, the flood protection and the, the water uh, infiltration benefits that it provides. Great, you got through all the topics. All right, let's uh, hear from group two. Thanks, Tammy. I will represent group two hopefully well here. Um, I wish we had more time, but we did start getting into the, the details of what going beyond California code actually means and where the city could play a role in really having an impact on that front. And then we did um, start talking about some, some transportation strategies and it seemed like, you know, there was, there's a lot that we cover in the example strategies there. So it seemed like there was general um, support for the direction those are going in. And then we touched a bit on, on water as well. And then I know there's additional thoughts from the group on, on other strategies that we didn't quite get to. So um, I know we'll be able to take those right now through the chat or the poll. And then we'll also have the survey later as well. Thank you. Yeah, we, we knew it was a lot to, uh, to send out tonight, but just do keep in mind we are starting these conversations, certainly not ending them tonight. So let's hear from group three. Yes, so I will represent group three. Um, there were two items that I think we had pretty lively discussions on, and one was about building materials and, you know, encouraging the use of renewable materials, but also making sure that all these renewable materials and even new ones that we use are chemical free and also very importantly, fire resistant. Um, there was also a conversation about carbon capture techniques, looking into those, are they effective? How could we use them effectively if they are effective? Um, and looking at specific carbon capture techniques through like landscaping, plants, things like that. And then there was a suggestion that I had never heard, so I would like to say it, but somebody said that there are now um, organic sticky labels that you can put on products that you're selling at a store, which I'm about to look up because this sounds really cool. So I was really happy somebody brought that up in our group. Um, I thought that was a really cool suggestion. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds like we're all learning tonight too. Fantastic. All right, group four. Before. We had some great conversation. We didn't make it all the way to the end, but uh, we had great conversations on the topics we covered. Uh, we had suggestions for uh, having sellers or home purchasers uh, install 
or be required to, to install uh, electrical, electrical wiring for electric vehicles in garages. Um, having incentives or requirements for gray water systems in both city buildings and residential buildings, uh, encouraging uh, solar and batteries on buildings and a microgrid instead of uh, just relying on pg and &E and MCE for electricity. Uh, we also talked about uh, some transportation strategies. Uh, my group uh, liked what was happening with uh, the slower streets now that restaurants are occupying uh, the, the outdoors more. Um, so keeping some of those practices that are already in place, uh, requiring restaurants to uh, compost um, instead of just discard their waste. And uh, one thing that I thought was a great idea was to create a sustainability week uh, with a few events in Walnut Creek. There's already a sustainability day in October. So just having that be an entire week uh, to promote sustainability in the city. Thank you, Jacqueline. And now uh, for group five, is that Kara? Yeah, so I'll do a quick report out on group five. We had a lot of discussion and we didn't quite make it to the end of the topics, but um, a few things we talked a lot about kind of the balance of doing community education versus providing financial incentives. There's a lot of discussion about um, the importance of it being kind of a, a good financial proposal for people to take action. Um, we talked about the opportunity with telework um, and how important it would be to act regionally and work with our business community. Uh, we talked a bit about reducing single use plastics and at city facilities and takeout um, and safety concerns when walking or biking as a big barrier. So there were a lot more ideas, but th those are a few of them. Great, thanks, Kara. Um, so thank you uh, everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, we know that there's a lot of different ways to spend your time these ways and that many of us spend a lot of hours uh, in front of our computers on Zoom. So. We are very grateful that you chose to spend some time with us tonight and to engage with us um, with our questions and ideas. So I want to um, share my screen for a moment to just show, show you the results from the Minty poll. Um, you know, before you heard the presentations, we asked you uh, to share with us your most, your idea for the most important action for the city. Um, and so similar to the highlights you heard uh, from our small group facilitators, the ideas uh, vary, um, but all, you know, definitely working toward uh, climate. So, uh, you know, many of you are very supportive of electric vehicles. There's definitely a, a theme in these comments to reduce uh, GHGs um, through, a, a, you know, um, tree planting to sequester carbon, to think creatively, to ensure that we're protecting uh, open spaces and natural habitats, uh, really getting that transportation sector related GHGs down, and to um, look toward um, renewable energy and uh, electrification in our built environment. So uh, thank you for sharing these ideas with us. Uh, Eli, I think we have a slide to pop back up here with our wrap up and um, we can go to the next one. So uh, we were a little ambitious with the content we put in front of you for the small groups, but we wanted um, to share with you that we've been doing the work and you've all shared a lot of great ideas throughout the process. And so there were a number of different ideas to put forward tonight. So if you were not able to um, get all of your comments out, if your group didn't get through all the topics, don't worry. Uh, Kara and our team will be launching an online survey in the coming weeks, and we will update the project website when that's available. And the city will also notify through the ECO newsletter of the availability of the survey and we, we will keep it open um, for a few weeks to allow you time to engage with us. So you'll see the same content you saw tonight available um, in some form online for you to respond to as well. So we will, um, after we go through these processes, we're gonna compile all the comments we received, prepare a summary report, 
If you want to know what that might look like, the report of our phase one engagement is available on the project website. And then we're going to work toward putting it all together, refining these strategies, getting them organized, and building out all the details, as Eli mentioned in this presentation, because the city councils asked us to come back to them this summer with an update and give them the big matrix of the draft strategies and the actions and the considerations. And then they're going to direct us um, how to proceed from there, whether we might need to go further or make some changes, um, pick some priorities, and then we'll prepare the public review draft of the sustainability action plan. And we are working toward completion of this project um, by the end of this year. Um, but we recognize that climate action is critically important. And so we do um, encourage all of you to take the steps that you can take individually through your community organizations and your businesses to continue uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to increase your resilience. Uh, the city team is still very much working toward implementation of the climate action plan. So while we're working on this new plan, please rest assured that there is continued work every day to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in Walnut Creek. And just, uh, it is April. So I think of April as Earth Month. I know we get at least one day, but to me, it's my favorite month of the year. So uh, thanks for starting uh, April and Earth Month and spring with us and talking about the Sustainability Action Plan. Share the word uh, with your friends and neighbors. If they weren't here tonight, let them know about this exciting project for the city and how much we'd love to hear from them through um, all the opportunities we have for community engagement. So I, with that, um, we're wrapping up. I know we're a couple minutes past 7.30, so thanks for sticking around with us and uh, stay tuned, visit the project website, sign up for the notifications and uh, stay involved. So thank you all everyone, have a good evening, take care. <laughs>